Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today is a momentous occasion. This is the 100th unboxing episode. When I first started this series, I think, what was it, a year and a half, two years ago? I'll throw the date up on the screen so we can reminisce together. I just thought this was gonna be like a one-off type thing. I didn't know if people would like watching this type of content or not, but little did I know it would quickly become the most popular thing I do on my channel. This series has definitely evolved throughout the years. I mean, hey, the 100th episode, what's special about this one is I got brighter lights in here, so hopefully these things look a little bit better now. <laughs> Previous to this episode, I just installed one here, but I figured, hey, might as well just go all out. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I was kind of paralyzed to do this episode for a week or two because I wanted something special, but at the same time, like all the special guitars, I would rather them have their own separate episodes. So I just thought for today, we'll unbox two really rare things and three guitars and a little special thing. But our first one here is actually something that's similar to a rare guitar that we unboxed. I think it was last episode. Unfortunately, it was shipped in a makeshift box. There we go. This actually came to me from Canada. I saw it get listed on Reverb and I was like, oh yes, that would be great as like a collection piece for something new that I'm working on for the channel and just uh, my brand in general. But the guy paid for overnight shipping, you know, from Canada all the way to Ohio, which really isn't that far. But this thing got locked away in customs. FedEx is a big pain in my butt when it comes to international stuff. I do not suggest using FedEx. I would definitely suggest going with UPS. There's usually less struggles with them. I mean, there's still some struggles. I mean, international shopping is never easy. Sometimes you get lucky, but most times it's just a bunch of paperwork hassle. So this time, Look what I found, a Tobacco Sunburst first run Les Paul KM here. So this is just like the one Robert Baker uses. Honestly, I've had his before. This is chunky. I would say it's chunkier than his, but it's got the same like picking scratches. Like if you didn't tell me that Baker just like slapped on a custom made plaque on his, I would say this just very well might be indie. But no, this is another one for uh, my little collection here of the Les Paul KMs. I'm looking for the Cherry Sunburst with the custom-made plaque for a realistic price. I was able to pick this one up for a pretty good deal. Ooh, I like that. Whoa, nice. It's like a flame figuring, but without the flame. I like that. I wonder if that's why this thing is so chunky. You don't find that too often. Now, unfortunately, I think this was like described as like excellent condition. I think I would call it very good at best. Maybe you could uh, buff and polish some of this stuff out. But essentially what I'm trying to do is find that cherry sunburst to get a nice like uh, article or a photo collection of three of the original first run custom maids. Are you guys seeing this right now? Somebody installed the strap button upside down. Why? <laughs> There's literally no reason for that. Okay, I'll have to fix that. But before anybody sends me the link to the Cherry Sunburst that's already on Reverb right now, it's too much. I don't want to pay that much. And what kills me is I actually already owned one of those before, but I think I'll hold on to this one for the time being until I can complete that little photo, because I think the internet needs that. Dang. You know, after looking at this guitar a little bit closer, it's got to go back. International returns are always a big pain. Hopefully the seller's good about this. So what's wrong with this guitar? I mean, the truss rod, it's almost in what I would consider limited adjustability. Normally, I wouldn't worry about that. I would just sell it being honest what it is. You know, if you need to adjust it, you've got a little bit left to it. And unfortunately, this thing does need quite an adjustment. I mean, I don't know when you guys be able to see it. That needs a good half a turn or so, I would guess. And by the time you do that, that's definitely gonna be sticking out some more. But the real nail in the coffin for this guy is the neck is severely twisted. Like sometimes you'll see it, that it just has like a little bit of the base sides higher than the treble. But this one, it's, it's pretty bad. So unfortunately, this is not the KM for me. Very, very terrible way to start this 100th unboxing episode. Okay, let's, let's hope. There's no getting disappointed by this. <laughs> so this is a nice little pamphlet manual 
that I believe they were given away for free at this auction and they just became highly valuable because of what exactly they are. And I just happened to have a fan of the show reach out to me and he's like, hey, these things are selling for like, you know, people are asking 300 plus bucks for the Les Paul property estate. Like, you know, just the whole auction itself. So we can uh, look through this thing. I, I don't want to show you too much because I'm sure there's some sort of like a copyright on this, but we can uh, look at a few pages here. They basically just, you know, took really nice photos of guitars that were in that auction. They told you a little bit about them. They told you what they think they're going to bid on. So people would get these and then they would know what to bid on as far as I'm aware. And, and I've always thought these things were pretty cool because they've got some pretty detailed photos. I would love to like make a book like this myself because I get so many cool guitars. I just need a nice little photo set up where we have a nice white background or something. That way, eventually I can hire somebody to, uh, you know, do this. But this was definitely very, very well put together for a book here. But I think you can still see all of Les Paul's auctions on Julian's website itself. Not quite as easy to flip through on the coffee table as this thing, though. So cool. I'd say this is in okay shape. The outside is actually pretty worn, to be honest. Now let's move on to this. To be honest with you guys, I really don't even remember what's in this box, because I have, like... 10 guitars waiting to be unboxed after this. So once you take the shipping labels off, you kind of forget who sent you what. I'm guessing, uh, gotta be something in a gig bag. Oh, okay. I remember what this is now. I've kind of been looking forward to this. We unboxed one of these things last episode too, so I'm sorry for the repeats here. But this time, we get a different color. I found myself one of the tenor tellies in the butterscotch, the one that I had already reviewed on my channel, so you can check that out if you want to learn more about these. But somebody bought my Fiesta Red almost instantly, and it's like, oh man, I really want a complete set for myself. So I quickly picked this one up, but then I just happened to find a complete set in uh, Japan. And I had my friend in Japan help me get those things back, so this is actually kind of a repeat for me, so I will be listing this one on my reverb shop if you're interested in checking it out. But I can't get enough of these goofy little four-string tenor tellies. Right, I think now we'll unbox these two guys together because these are not guitars. These are actually pretty rare guitar cases. Now it seems silly to say that a guitar case is rare, but <laughs> it is true. It is true. We'll start with this one. And the reason why these things are valuable simply comes down to what guitars came stock with this case. It's one of those things where not everybody needs one of these, but the one person that does need it is going to be willing to pay quite a bit to have it. And the story behind how I found this one, it was just on reverb one night. The shop just had it listed as used Gibson Les Paul case. So that's when it pays if you specialize in something. But anyways, our first case here, take a look at that. It's kind of like a, a crushed velvet leather like looking exterior here. And it says Gibson Custom Art Historic. This is an early version of this case. And the way that you can tell is because the logo is upside down because they eventually moved this down instead of having this up here. And then they pretty much just always left the case badge or whatever branding they put on the cases right there ever since then. But this iteration of the case is correct for a slash snake pit Les Paul. So sometimes people who have lost their original case or need to restore their case with a better condition one, they'll be looking for one of these and other very early, you know, custom art historic things. I mean, look at that. It has a hinge. Usually they just let, you know, the felt and whatever do the job. They don't actually have a legitimate hinge. Thought that's kind of cool. But this case right here is actually even more rare and it's probably the most expensive case outside of the original Lifton's. It was so expensive back in the day that they actually had a hard time selling these cases. This is the Gibson Artist series case very famously used for the the Les Paul original case, but not every single one of them got this. What makes this one fancy, again, you get that kind of like crushed exterior just like this guy has. I wish they would go back to nice fancy cases like this. And unfortunately this one is uh, missing the handle and not just missing the handle, also missing one of these attacher things, whatever they're called. 
But what also made these things awesome is the Gibson ribbon up here. This one's actually, it's an okay shape once I find somebody to restore the handle or something. It doesn't have any crazy funky odors. We even still have most of the pull tab left. So they made two different versions of this case. There was this one that was the black interior and then the really cool oxblood one that's kind of purple and reddish. You can see that on the Steve Howe, the Les Paul video. But what's kind of interesting about this case is the story behind the guy who got it. Because I actually sold the person that I purchased this from an RD before, and he told me the story. He found this little old lady who's had this case just empty for like 40 years sitting in her closet. And I think he picked it up at a garage sale or something, or maybe he knew her and just talked to her to get it. And he asked about a guitar. Is there any guitar that came in here? And unfortunately, no. But these were introduced actually in the early 70s, but they're so expensive that nobody bought them. So they just kind of used them up on the V Les Paul series. And sometimes you'll find like a Les Paul custom that does have them. But the very right buyer that desperately needs one will usually pay up to 1200 bucks just for this case. Isn't that crazy? I mean, they're fancy, but you know, when you have a V Les Paul that's naked, you kind of want the original case that's deemed acceptable. Moving on to our very last guitar of this particular episode. It's another one that I'm really not quite too sure what is in this one. Hopefully it's not a guitar that I wanted to unbox and review in the same episode. We'll find out. Because I actually have some interesting used guitars coming up. But as of right now, let's get this newspaper out. There we go. I'm going to have a fun time cleaning this stuff up. I need to get myself another one of those buckets. But anyways, something Gibson Custom Art Historic. This is a good time to pause to show you guys. You see how different and cheap this case looks in comparison to that one that we just unboxed with that crushed exterior? Man, those late 90s cases were so much cooler than the early 2000s. It feels really lightweight though. This must be something that we'll see on another episode of the Trogley's Guitar Show. Sorry for that cliffhanger. Nah, just kidding. I'll go ahead and uh, give you guys a preview. This is the rarest color of the Les Paul Catalina. I didn't even know it existed until I really did a deep dive for my old Catalina video. This is the crazy, ultra, sillily rare Black Pearl. Now, I always thought it would kind of have like a black pearlescence to it. No, it's it's just black. <laughs> That's a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping, you know, it'd have something going on here. So pretty much it just comes down to its fancy name, the Black Pearl. But if you're a Catalina collector, I mean, you know that this is a ridiculously rare finish. So other than the finish, I mean, it's pretty much the exact same as the other Catalina video that I did. So you can check that out there. Yeah, everything's looking peachy on this one. What makes Catalina's interesting is they're very early custom shop produced guitars. I mean, like not the first ones, but like within the first five years of the custom shop officially opening. And the Catalinas eventually became the Elegant series. Some cool features of them include that custom shop inlay on the headstock, like the only the very early elegants have. Now, whether you love that or hate that, that's up to you. But ebony fretboard, a very special chambered out body. You get the cool perloid uh, pick guard and truss rod cover, the white plastics. And you also get real mother of pearl inlays, whereas most standards get the perloid material. So yeah, this guy's fine. However, I thought for sure Black Pearl had some sort of a sparkle, so maybe this is like just a rare factory freak black. I'll have to do some more uh, looking into that, that's for sure. Because it doesn't look to have been refinished, but hey, I guess I'll figure that out later. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some boxing. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to pack up today. But this is that Jimmy Page Miro Telecaster that inspired that whole Jimmy Page review. Unfortunately, that video didn't do very well, but I mean, that's what I get. I mean, these things came out in what, mid 2019? Talked about in early 2019. So talking about them at the end of 2020, eh, not the best idea, but hey, I wanted to do it anyways. I found it interesting. Some people preferred the Made in Mexico, other people preferred the USA. I think I'm going for the USA. I mean, the feel is night and day. I mean, they might sound fairly similar. Like, like the Made in Mexico is a very good value. Why don't you do some additional setup work anyways? 
Speaking of the Dragon Deli, that is our next one that we need to pack up. There are a lot of bad reviews out there for this guitar, especially on Reaver. People saying that they're 14 pounds, they're just relatively disappointed with the quality of it. And you know, maybe I just happened to get a good one. This one was actually lighter than my Made in USA one. So maybe not for everyone, but I thought it was a fun guitar anyways. Here's a great pair of guitars that need shipped out. So Christmas Day, I think around like 5 p.m. or so, I get an offer for this bad boy. The number one last year of production True Historic 2017 prototype. I was kind of feeling generous that day, you know, being Christmas. So I accepted his offer. And then the next morning he goes, hey, can I get like super expedited shipping on this? And I might be interested in number two. Would you do this? And it's like, okay, yeah. I like the idea that this can stay as a complete set of the Gibbons top carve. I was a little bit reluctant to let this thing go. I mean, this is one of the nicest historic reissues I've ever seen. The top is just to absolutely die for on this one. It's my favorite color anyways. But I'm sure if you like the cherry sunbursts, that's nothing to sneeze at either. But when I think of burst, I think something kind of like this. So these guys are being overnighted all the way out to California. That's a long way to go. And that's gonna call it quits for this boxing and unboxing episode. I hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Take care.